Hello and welcome back to the official launch of the Freedom Potential Centre in Varsity Lakes. There's an amazing venue here that has just opened while other people are out buying toilet paper and closing venues. This one has opened and we have an amazing guest speaker coming up for you next. She is a fellow Speakers Tribe Queensland leader with myself and Melissa Groom, who we just heard. She's the author of also Become the Woman of Your Dreams. For the first time in history, a true story about the epidemic of abandonment in the Philippines is told in this gripping true story of courage, healing and radical self-love. Become the Woman of Your Dreams is the ideal book for courageous women looking for inspiration and empowerment so that they can heal their past and discover their true passion and life purpose. I'm Alderman Altenay, your MC for this afternoon, going right through to 9pm. Please welcome to the stage, Grace Harris. Do you have a burning desire to become the woman that you've always known yourself to be? The woman that you know you're meant to be? Have you ever felt that you can be, do, and have so much more in your life, in your relationships, in your well-being, in your career, in your business, and yet something is stopping you from becoming the real, true person deep within you. I'm Grace Harris. I'm the founder and author of Become the Woman of Your Dreams. This is a memoir that I've written to honor a true story about abandonment and healing, a journey that had really transformed me from, pers from a person who was totally broken emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, to someone who has transformed her life as a woman now of passion, love, and purpose. Today, I'm going to take you into a journey and to my intention is to inspire you so that you too can see the journey that lies within you. So that you know that you are a woman who can transform your pain into your prolific personal power and legacy. This journey is, is more common than you think. Millions of women across the globe from different ages, different ethnicities, do have the transformation and deserve to have the transformation. Women that are young, middle aged, old, black, white, brown skin, women from all walks of life, doctors, nurses, teachers, CEOs, politicians, but more importantly, women that might be closer to you, she might be your mom. She might be your auntie. She might be your neighbor. She might be your best friend. Ultimately, the hero's journey might, result, might resonate with you. Child abandonment is a universal epidemic that breeds intergenerational and multidimensional damage to a person's mental health, emotional well-being, and their ability to trust and build long-lasting relationships with other people. Today, there are 20 million abandoned children in the world. In the Philippines alone, there are 2 million. These children's fates are largely due to extreme poverty where their parents believe that they have no means to survive or raise their own children. Having said that, there is also a fraction of abandoned children that have come from middle-class families whose parents have the ability to take care of them, but just simply choose not to. And studies will show you that child abandonment is a spectrum of neglect, abuse, and ultimately, indifference towards a child. Anyone who goes through this type of exposure and upbringing becomes predisposed to anxiety, depression, and multitudes of chronic health and mental well-being issues when they grow up. So my question with you today, and for you and to you today, is that how are we going to stop this vicious cycle? How are we going to empower each and every woman in this planet so that they know that they are enough? 
so that she knows and she feels that she is enough. So that you know and you feel that you are enough. That whatever had happened in the past, that you have the capability to change your future and the capability to change the future of your children and the generations after your children. It's a worthwhile question to ask, isn't it? When I was five years old, I do vividly remember when, um, the day when my mother said to me, let's go and visit your grandmother. I was excited. I was a child. Uh, you know, we were going to visit our relatives. So I put on my only going out dress. It was blue. It had a ruffled feathers and ruffled hemline and, and flower sash. And I was bouncing around. And I thought it was all good until as soon as we arrived at my grandmother, she said to me that she was going to leave and come back for me later that afternoon. And you know, I waited all day outside of my grandmother's house. But when the sun had began to set and darkness fell, I realized she was not coming back. There were no goodbyes, no explanations. Over the course of the next 15 years, I was exposed to neglect, abuse, and indifference. As an adult, I suffered from anxiety and high-functioning depression. I didn't know how to trust myself, let alone trust other people. I repeatedly brought the abusive nature of my upbringing into my personal relationships. I didn't know how to love myself unconditionally, unapologetically. It wasn't until three de decades la later after that day when I was abandoned when I was forced to awaken in and change the trajectory of my life in a near-death event. I was lying on a hospital um, operating table for a standard medical proce procedure. It was going to be simple, but it's not simple. By no fault of anybody, I had an overdose of anesthesia. And so I was fighting for my life. Thankfully, it was my time. Something was calling me. Some deeper purpose is still there for me, fortunately. And so what I, what I want to pose with you is just a subtle but very meaningful question that you can ask yourself. Have you ever had a moment in your life when you thought to yourself, how have I lived my life so far? What am I doing here? Why am I here? What is my purpose? It's now been seven years since that near-death experience that really changed and catapulted and transformed everything in the landscape that was my life. But if I was to look at that seven-year transformation, I know one thing, and it, it is this. And if I can quote um, Marian Williamson, the author of A Woman's Worth, she says to us that our deepest fears is not that we are in inadequate. Our deepest fears is because we are fearful of how potentially powerful we are. It is our light, not our darkness, that we are most fearful of. And so with that thought, what I'm going to do is I will show you one very simple but very powerful concept that have become the fundamental basis of my transformation. And it is this. It's called the fearless paradigm of self-love. You see, as I studied um, the, the decades between the abandonment day and then the near-death experience, and as I studied lives of people around that incident and the lives of my clients and the lives of people that I interact with, there is one thing that I found for sure, is that we are all born with a basic paradigm of self-love. We all love ourselves. We are wired to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves, to nurture ourselves, to evolve to something more. The problem lies in the formative years when we are from zero to seven years old, when every belief system, every idea, every thought that come to us came from the outside. It might have been our parents, neighbors, community, media, books that we read.
And so everything that we believe at that point in time in the transformative years, we don't own them. And the biggest problem of it is that most of us move forward into our lives thinking that we own those beliefs, that they are useful for us, that they are the best things that we can use in order to shape the lives that we have for the rest of time. And so it becomes a basic and more often than that, fear-based paradigm of self-love. As an example, when my mother abandoned me at the age of five, she was doing her best. She felt that she could not raise a little girl. And so she made a decision to make sure that the little girl survived, but not with her. And so then she moved on to live her own life because that's what she can do. It was her own paradigm of self-love to protect and nurture. It was the best that she could do. It is a paradigm. A few years ago, I was in a position to make a very radical decision. I was in corporate for a long time, and it was a very, very stable corporate career. And every now and then, as you may know, we all grow, grow out of an experience, whether that is a relationship, whether that is a career, a business, whether that is a particular hobby or a habit. We grow out of it, and something calls for us to evolve into something more, and we can either evolve inside of it or evolve outside of it. I found myself in a position that I needed to evolve outside of my career, but financial security was in the corporate career. I knew that to follow my calling, to write my book, to help others, to speak in platforms so I can spread my message, that would take time, and that would be a risk. And I had a choice. I had the self-introspection. Do I stay in my fear-based paradigm of self-love, or do I evolve into something bigger, better, and higher for me, which is my purpose, using my fearless paradigms of self-love? You see, it is up to us to shift that pain into light and power, that fear-based into fearless. And today, the best thing is you can easily do this at home. And all you have to do is just divide the paradigm into two radical places, the fear-based and the fearless. And you just make a list of the people, the places, and the experiences that are currently in your life. This is called a life inventory. And tick each item. Are they serving my higher purpose? Are they congruent and aligned with my fearless purpose? Or am I staying here because I feel safe, because I feel comfortable, and I don't want to get out and transform? Have a little introspection because you know, just because the thought is in your head doesn't mean you have to keep it. You can choose what you think. And so in closing, what I'd like to do is quickly do a little bit of an exercise with you and the lovely people here in the studio. So what I'll do is I'm going to ask you in a moment to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And as you do, I'm going to give you three objects, one at a time. And when I do, I'll ask you to hold that object in the center of your mind where your third eye can see. Hold that object for two seconds. And I'm going to ask you to let that go. We'll start right now. Close your eyes for me. Take a deep breath. The first object is a warm chocolate cake. Hold it in your mind for one, two, let it go. The second object is a red ball. Hold it in your mind for one, two, let that red dot go now. Feel your mind as blank and available. And the third object is a tsunami coming at you. Right there. Hold it for one and two. And then let the tsunami go. See, you know, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it. Examine that belief 
examine that paradigm of self-love because you are meant to evolve, you are meant to transform. Let's do this. Let's stop the vicious cycle of women not being empowered, women not feeling that they are good enough because we are, we can raise these children, we can cut this abandonment epidemic. And I invite you to really um, read this book because it's gonna challenge you, it's gonna make you laugh, it's gonna make you cry, it's gonna make you think, and ultimately, you will see you in it. I'm Grace Harris, author of Become the Woman of Your Dreams. Thank you. Grace Harris, amazing. Wow, that was such a powerful talk. Everyone was just spellbound in the room here. It was brilliant. Thank you so much for presenting for us today. Now, we are at the launch of the Freedom Potential Centre. What do you think of the centre, Grace? Oh, <laughs> you should see this place. Um, beautiful paintings, um, very professionally set up. Yeah, very neat, very welcoming as well. Lots of parking outside, yes. Yes. Yeah, love yeah, it. Really yeah, I do. And we are in Varsity Lakes. We're on the Gold Coast. And while other people are closing down venues, this is very exciting that it's opened up here. It is just brilliant. So where is the best place to connect with you? Website? Yes, Aldwin, um, the best place to, to find me is really on Facebook. So mm -hmm. if you go to my website, which is uh, thegraceharris.com, click on the icon Facebook and you'll find me there. And just send me a private message. You can also find my book on uh, mybook.2 slash be the woman of your dreams. It is available on Amazon for pre-order. Um, official release is on November 12. Fantastic.